Welcome back. Last year, the Philippines' real estate market ended on a positive note as outsourcing and leasing activities continued to grow. Remax Philippines Country Manager Miguel Naval joins us tonight to discuss how the Philippines can continue to tap into the real estate market's potential. Thank you so much, Miguel, for joining us in the Hi, studio Miguel. tonight. Hi, thank you for having me. Salve, Ron. And it looks like congratulations are in order. You brought the Philippine flag to this R4 convention. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. It was a great experience. So, uh, representing the Philippines. So, some of the top professionals, real estate professionals, have represented us. And in fact, garnered quite the number of honors representing what we like to say is a high service level of real estate uh, here in the Philippines. What's the convention like? Like, I didn't know that there's a the convention. <laughs> is, yeah, you'd think yeah. like in just like how other professionals, yeah. other professions would have huge conventions, we would have a worldwide convention of about 5,000 plus real estate professionals all around the world. But you're all pitching there and <laughs> showing your pitching showing skills the and your sales, yeah, and showing the properties. We're really talking what more about... What does it take to win? Strategies. Well, honestly, it's, it's really just the skill you put and I guess the service level that you try to implement in your businesses. Um, mm. So what you pick up in the convention really is how to implement your service at a high level so that you can in fact improve your skills and really um, I suppose grab more business really help more people in the end we're talking about agents what what makes a, a real estate agent stand out from among the rest and in, in order for for that person to garner an award like that when you got in, uh, that that you got in the convention it's really the expertise and i guess the perspective that that you can bring to the table in a real estate transaction so in every transaction um we're expected to guide both buyers and sellers into it and really it can be the biggest con biggest biggest asset you buy in your life right mm -hmm. it could be really a make or break thing so our um, expertise in knowing the market, learning about the market, the best things to consider when purchasing or even selling uh, really can change a deal and really help a deal actually close and help people get their real estate goals mm -hmm. um, just right. Ethics is a big part of it though. Of yeah. course, yes, ethics. Mm -hmm. um, professionalism and credibility and your integrity in fact is so big. Um, real estate can be, especially here, as we see um, in different countries, uh, you'll see that um, transparency and the professionalism really helps in the market movement, mm -hmm. right? Because the trust level is there. And if you can also implement that same trust in transactions, people will be more comfortable making decisions, mm -hmm. which again are very important because they can be some of the biggest investments in your life. Pasharon and I always report on the Philippines being at the bottom of the list. <laughs> this is such a nice new piece of news, right? That we're one of the, the people who were awarded. Yeah, and mm. you know, I've seen the government really also step up and other brokers inside and outside of Remax trying to push the level of professionalism, push the level of service here to a higher level so that both outside investors, our internal stakeholders are more comfortable in doing business, really helping the economy in that way as well. Because after all, like when you're ready to buy a property, we are right in the front of that, right. helping and trying to mm -hmm. get that happen for whatever you might want to buy, whether it's a beach house, whether it's a condominium, house and lot, mm -hmm. even commercial lots. I've heard of Colorum public utility vehicles, oh, yeah. but there's such a thing as well as Colorum yes. real estate agents. Yes. Yeah. Um, how big of a problem is it here in the Philippines and what is being done about it? It's quite big a problem. So uh, I'd say overall uh, the real estate brokerage business or that service is quite underserved, meaning a lot of people due to the lack of maybe education and information tend to go to someone who is there and available to them who might not be licensed. Sometimes it's a relative. Sometimes it's right. a relative, yeah. sometimes it's my tita's tita. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and sometimes uh, that can cause some problems and maybe also the wrong impression to people, especially as we see externally, how it's done otherwise is a lot more professional, everyone is licensed. Mm -hmm. So I think now uh, the government especially with new laws such as the RESA law is currently being implemented where now 
to get the license, you now need to take a course, a four-year course, mm -hmm. a REM course. A four-year course? A four-year course okay. to, in order to take your licensure exam and then really be prepared to, of course, um, service and be uh, at the level we need to be for, for the trust to be there in mm. the real estate sector. What's a regulatory body that handles brokerage firms? And when somebody, for example, is victimized by mm -hmm. some of these people, where do they go? What's the process like? Yeah. And can they get their money back? So it's controlled primarily by the PRC. Mm -hmm. So the PRC is um, the body that governs all real estate brokers and their sales agents. That's a regulatory commission. Yeah. So that regulatory commission is the same one that uh, regulates other professions yeah. such as uh, lawyers, doctors. So similar in nature, similar in the way they approach it. So there is a level of accountability there. Mm -hmm. But really, I think what we want to do in REMAX is not only follow what the regulations say, but really lead the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really through education, through learning how to do things by seeing how other things are done in different countries, seeing if we can apply it here, and really kind of bringing that here. And that's really what we're, um, what our goal here is, you know, that everyone has a nice real estate experience with a high level of trust, a high level of satisfaction. Ron, sorry, yeah. one, more, one more question. I'm <laughs> You see, my buttons are pushed because <laughs> there's a lot of anger. Okay, in the Philippines, people are not used to complaining. Mm -hmm. That's why they're not getting mm -hmm. what they deserve, deserve. Exactly. right? Mm -hmm. So when I'm victimized, for example, I just shut up because the system or the process is so convoluted. I'd rather just go on to the next property or get victimized again. <laughs> so what should people expect? People should expect... Um, People should expect a real honest conversation where people are not push selling you. People are not trying to manipulate you. Do you file a you. case against this person? You go to the PRC? Well, first and foremost, you should check for licenses. Oh. That's right. one big thing, mm -hmm. right? So if you were to do this, checking a licenses, license or mm. dealing with a reputable brand that has accountability and systems in place to, of course... Um, watch out for these things that are educating people on the ground who you interact with. Those are important things to watch out Sorry, for. Sorry, how do you check if um, a person is licensed and if that license is valid? Where do you go? Chat GPT. Chat GPT. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Facebook? No, nah, I'm no. kidding. No, but you will be able to ask for their PRC license. And then you and then check, check against avatar. what database? You will be able to check against the database online. Oh. Okay. So that will make it a lot easier. Right. So obviously, we've bought properties and never checked the <laughs> privacy license. <laughs> and you were lucky that I suppose everything went well. Mm -hmm. I hope. Uh, well, this last good. one, knock on wood. <laughs> uh, I'm getting anxious. <laughs> so uh, hopefully, uh, as we continue to grow, and that's the outlook because the government is fully supporting this, and of course, there's perfect effort there also on their side to kind of push forward in this with other professionals, real estate mm -hmm. boards also really cracking down on these things. Mm -hmm. And I think it will really come from, I suppose, inside out, like we, meaning it's also, there are real passionate brokers within Remax who really want to change that reputation, really increase that service level and uh, deliver a good experience to really all Filipinos. So mm -hmm. we've been expanding with 36 offices here about 300 agents. We're soon going to open in Cebu, Davao, and really creating that network of professional brokers can really perhaps change the industry uh, and make it really a better experience for each and every Filipino. You, you mentioned a while ago that you look at the best practices from other countries as well mm -hmm. and bring it here to the Philippines and, and, and then apply it and teach it to, to your agents. Can, can you give us an example of what, what those best practices are that you've brought from other countries that are not really uh, taught by uh, the, the, the other companies to, to their agents? So what we can really bring to the table are the manner of which we engage with our clients, really advising them based on what realistically can happen, really being truthful, and honestly, really uh, practicing representation mm -hmm. and really focusing 
on the best interest of the client rather than just closing the sale. And because the commissions can be a very mm. important process of <laughs> yeah. the, I mean, a very important part of the process for the agent. Yeah. But what about the client? Yes, exactly. Mm. So, um, like we say, if the the biggest motivator for an agent is the commission, mm -hmm. really that puts you in the wrong place. Right. Where you would say and maybe even do anything to perhaps get the commission. Right. And I'm yeah. not even sure about the transparency of the fees and charges because sometimes you see they're not uniform. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot, mm -hmm. by the way, when you're buying a property. There's so many things that other fees on top of the property price, right? And yeah. I hope there's more disclosure on that so that people understand. Exactly. Um, something that we're really trying to introduce mm. is transparency through actual documentation, mm -hmm. right? Giving proper documentation where each and everything is dis everything discussed is written down, broken down, mm -hmm. so that you have the confidence to transact, mm -hmm. right? That you're not simply sending out the text, mm -hmm. professional communication. These are practices that are already very, very uh, ingrained in other countries where us, it's a little informal, right? Mm -hmm. Communicating could be informal. Mm -hmm. The way that you transact might be informal. But Text lang pare. <laughs> Pirma ka na. Yeah. <laughs> so, an ATS, for example, an authority to sell is a very big thing now where you are actually authorized to sell a property where everything is stated, the price, yeah. so that well-documented transactions like that uh, walang balikan, walang mm -hmm. there's nothing that can um, change yung usapan na ganun, mm -hmm. right? And that's the <coughs> things that we're introducing. Although, I'll tell you now, uh, not all sellers, buyers might want, um, aren't even used to it, right? Mm. That kind of service level that there's, everything's documented. But I do really feel that that's the way to protect every side in every yeah. deal. Mm -hmm. That everything's written down, everything's organized, and everything's documented. Miguel, you said you're opening a lot of offices, 300, uh, yeah, 300, and 300 agents, agents brokers, yeah. and many different offices across the Philippines. But I've looked at the GDP numbers, the recent ones, that the one that came out just today. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Compared with last year, there are a lot more uh, vacancies. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, um, it's struggling a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, are you still gung ho on expanding despite the situation in the first quarter? Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it seems like what's slowing down or what has really got really changed where is the office or the commercial landscape but Remax actually does 90% of our business in residential and that's mm. more crisis proof no and that really is yeah more crisis proof it's really movement and lifestyle so for example you'd say during the pandemic uh, we did pretty well as well then meaning uh, what we captured was the movement from maybe condominiums to townhouses to beach houses Anything that a person would want to transact with, buy, sell, lease, will change all the time. And I think that's more due to lifestyle, right? And I don't think the lifestyles change so much, dra so drastically today, right? Versus the pandemic, it did, but then we saw the movement. But now it's back to maybe perhaps 2019, and that's what mm -hmm. we see, right? Mm -hmm. We feel that. So, in fact, Remax has grown uh, quarter one 40% in terms of the number of transactions we've been doing, mm -hmm. uh, primarily driven by condominiums, houses, um, anything under the sun, we do also agriculture. So not necessarily just offices, although we do understand what you're saying about offices mm. and uh, that there is quite a slowdown there. But in terms of people needing to upgrade their houses, having kids and now need a bigger space, mm -hmm. getting married and now finding a condominium to start their family. That will always be there and we're ready to service any kind of need that for, for real estate there. Okay. Whether in Cebu, Davao, <laughs> Baguio. <laughs> this is the example yeah. of what happened in yeah. Nevada. <laughs> Thank you so much, the Miguel. What a fun conversation. So Very right. positive amid all of the difficulties. Of in course, the of course. Thanks, Thank, you so Thank you so much. Thanks. That's your business outlook. I'm Ron Cruz. And I'm Salve Duplito. The world tonight comes your way at the top of the next hour. Keep it here on ANC.